a life cycle is like there's no direct career path to what you are achieving now but mm-hmm. what were you doing at 18 what are you what were you trying was to I do doing, yeah i was trying to yeah do a bit of aussie rules okay. um, playing sort of some some semi professional football um, and then going to university doing physio with the goal to be head of medical for a an English Premier League team or an NBA team, and my first job out of uni was exactly that, working in the Premier League. So I sort of got wow. to it, got there a little bit, tasted it, and went, oh, I don't like the taste of that. Who are we working with? Uh, the Wolves, or Hampton Wolves, or the okay. Wanderers. So they okay. were in the Premier League. Yeah. yeah. And what was it like looking after, what, a deck of 50 players, 30 players? Yeah, 30 players who are sort of on, you know, between the ages of 20 and 30 on ridiculous amounts of money, like, you know, 50,000 pound to 200,000 pound per week. <laughs> um, they're just having fun yeah. driving their camo Aston Martins yeah. and their Range Rovers and things. So it was, a, again, another crazy experience from going from Perth WA University there to into the Premier League. But um, it was great to see behind the scenes of all of that and how it all operates. And Is that, yeah, was, like, in comparison fun. to, like, a, a, an Aussie Rules or a Rugby League club, how mm-hmm. differently are they run to the Premier League clubs? Is there a lot more professionalism? Is it... Where does it stand? Because obviously there's a lot mm. more money involved. I noticed that when I was in yeah. Manchester, yeah. Liverpool recently, and they were playing Manchester. We tried yeah. to get tickets and they were like yeah. 500 quid each or something yeah, like that. Yeah. It was madness, crazy. The, type crazy. Of, the type of cash that's getting thrown around yeah. there. It's sort of uh, advanced and behind at the same time, a bit like comparing Byron and New York. It's like the, there's pluses and minuses, but with the, the Premier League in, say, England versus AFL, AFL is, and rugby is like work really hard. It's all about work rate, work rate, work rate, whereas football, uh, soccer... In England, is more like an artistry sport where it's like, can I put that ball on the top of the net, um, you know, one time in 90 minutes? That's all I need to do. If I do that, I'm a legend. Wow. And so they're not sort of work ethic based. Okay. In terms of versus these other sports, which are like must train all year round, three times a day, et cetera, et cetera. But in terms of the back end, I guess it's all becoming very advanced. And wherever you see money, you see more research and you see better mm. professionals. That's why there was a lot of actual Australian uh, health professionals, physios in England, because there's more opportunities there than working for an AFL team, mm. just in terms of you know being in the biggest sport in the world, in the biggest club in the world, traveling around Europe, working with the best surgeons, all of those things, those career advancements were there so that it, money attracts the best talent. I can mm. imagine that the difference between, okay, uh, 1990s rugby league, rugby union, AFL clubs, in comparison to now, you know, 2020, mm. Man U, Liverpool, those type of places. The way that a player in the off-season is trained, the mm. way that the player is trained during the week, tracked, you know, macros, all that type of stuff, mm. uh, following the diet strictly, make sure that the injury re- prevention and recovery is all, all those sort of schedules and, uh, and those situations are all... Are they are they put down to like on paper? Is if a player is given this type of thing? What is the what is the change from twenty years ago to now? As far as I'm sure yeah. there's a million different changes. Yeah. What are the main big changes? Is a, yeah. a player still enjoying the games as much? Do you think? It's a good question. I mean, definitely from what I understood in the Premier League, and I think even in AFL, there was high levels of depression, okay. both during uh, you know during the season, um, but then post career as well. So. There's a lot of pressure there. And then there's this, I think, the enjoyment also comes from them just wanting to play the sport and love the sport and just keep being a kid mm. and enjoying it. But what happens is then all the nonsense comes in again, like the cars and the attention and the women and all of those things, which on the surface from the outside, everyone says, fuck, that's amazing. I want that. But then they get that. And I think there's still that emptiness void there. So the ones, the players that have done really well um, have just kept just loving kicking the ball around mm. um, and haven't got too caught up in... The other stuff, even though it's fun and whatever may come of it, um, not getting too attached to it, and it doesn't derail their career as well. You get off, you know, all of these, you know, rugby stories you hear about weekenders and all of those things that occur. Um, yeah, I guess that's been the biggest change is that there's been all this noise. Mm. You know, they've gone to become stars now. Mm. You know, they are people listen to them as disciples, or you know, they listen to what they have to say on social media and things, and so they're just always under the camera. Mm. But maybe 20 years ago they weren't. They did have some privacy. Um, well, I mean, I've like, heard stories about, like, my old man played for the Knights mm-hmm. in the rugby league in Australia. And the stories that you hear about, not him, he was a professional, of course, but <laughs> other people, like, the things yeah. that they, if they happened today, yeah. you know, there would be all sorts going on. There'd yeah. be massive investigations and all yeah. that type of stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. and I mean, 
I think it's such a shame that mm-hmm. that is that there is the spotlight on those type yeah. of people. Yeah. You compare the way that we treat, say, Premier League players or AFL players, uh, rugby league players, in comparison to how perhaps a fan of uh, mixed martial arts will treat a UFC fighter. If they're signed mm-hmm. to that roster and they get caught snorting coke or or whatever or smoking mm-hmm. weed or whatever they're doing. It's almost like it's a completely different game because people are like, yeah. oh, yeah, that's something he would do. And then yeah. the UFC treats it different. They're like, yeah, yeah, he's a dickhead, but oh, well, he's fighting mm-hmm. this weekend. Mm-hmm. Come and watch it. Yeah, It's weird how, I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen this with like with players here in Australia, how there will be a scandal and they go out and instead of um, acknowledging it, saying, listen, I'm an idiot. Yeah. Okay, I, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, We all know yeah. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. I was drunk. They hide. They go over to England. They play in yeah. the Super League over there for mm-hmm. the Rugby League and all that type of stuff. I just, I've, I've always said that the best way to deal with those horrible situations is come out the next day and go, "Yep, I'm a dickhead." Yeah. All right, yeah. listen, I'm in, I'm 20 years old. I make a million dollars a year. Yeah, sorry. The truth is, then they'll lose the sponsorship and then they'll lose other things. So it's like, what do you do in that situation? Mm. But hard to say. Hard to say what what they should do. But um, it's a lot of pressure on them because, yeah, they're just sort of wanting to have fun and do different things, whatever fun means to them. But that comes with you know, a cost of yeah. their career.